Aloha everyone! My name is Anna and I'd like to welcome you to New Hope Windward Online. Thank you for tuning in with us today and we're so glad that you're here. Now in a few moments, we're going to hear a great message. But before we do, we're going to worship God through our giving. A couple of weeks ago, we shared the overwhelming response to the Christmas offering we held in December. In total, you generously gave $310,414. Every dollar donated will go directly towards financially supporting the 22 partner ministries and community organizations locally and around the world. We recently reached out to several of these ministries to ask what their high needs are. One new ministry New Hope Windward will be partnering with this year is Ho'ola Napua, a program dedicated to bringing healing to those who have been sexually exploited in our state. This year, they plan to launch a residential treatment facility for underage females called Pearl Haven and need several items to furnish their facility. So, through your generosity, in addition to our monthly financial support, New Hope Windward will be financing the build-out of a reception area as well as the purchase of a nurse's exam table for their medical room to care for these victims of sex trafficking. Psalm 34:18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Jesus cares deeply about the hurting, like those at Ho'ola Napua, and is actively at work to restore hearts and mend lives. New Hope Windward, through your sacrificial giving, you become Jesus' hands and feet to bring healing and wholeness to many, such as these girls in recovery. So thank you for extending His heart of compassion to those who desperately need the hope that can only be found in Him. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three easy, safe, and secure ways to donate. By clicking the Give tab on our website, you can give a one-time gift or have it recurring. Another way to give is by texting the word DONATION to the number on your screen and follow the instructions. Or, if you prefer to mail in your gift, you can send it to the address below. Would you bow your heads with me as I lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, you're always in the business of bringing healing and hope to the broken and lost. So when we as your church band together to extend compassion to those who are hurting, you work powerfully to crush the works of the devil and undo the harm he has done in the lives of many. As we give towards your kingdom work, we join with you, King Jesus, as your ally to vanquish the enemy. In your powerful and matchless name we pray, amen. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, we wanna welcome you to our New Hope Windward online community. We'd love for you to share this link and invite your friends and family to tune into our services as well. Now, we'd love to keep you informed and updated with all that's going on at New Hope Windward. You can go ahead and text Starbucks to 484848 and we'll email you a Starbucks e-gift card as our way of saying, welcome to New Hope Windward. Well, I'm sure many of you are planning your mini Super Bowl party next Sunday with poke, garlic chicken wings, but before the game kicks off, be sure to start your Super Bowl Sunday early with an inspiring, faith-filled message and testimonies by a few great NFL players. Let's take a look. This is Sam Macho. This is Carson Wentz. Brandon Cooks. And I'm excited to share my story. Share my story during Football Sunday. Football Sunday 2021. This year has been unlike any other year. For all of us. For all of us. But in the middle of the uncertainty, there's a unique opportunity for us all to experience the faithfulness of God. Because when the ground is shifting and the world is rumbling, God is always inviting us into something that cannot and will not ever be moved. Football Sunday 2021. Release hope. Unlock potential. Be, be unshaken. unshaken. So, next Sunday, February 7th, invite your family and friends to tune into our Football Sunday service right here online at New Hope Windward. Our Kids Zone ministry will also be kicking off a brand new four-week series called Challenge Accepted, where your kids will gain some great faith gems on how to tackle challenges they face through sports-related lessons and activities. Your kids won't want to miss it. 
Well, that's all the announcements I have for you. We have an inspiring message today. So wherever you are joining us from, would you join me in welcoming Pastor TJ? Hey everyone. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Whether you're joining us online here in the islands or if you're joining us from the mainland or anywhere around the world, welcome to church. If you are joining us for the first time, allow me to introduce myself. My name is TJ. I'm a part of the teaching team here, and it is an honor to have you here with us. Now, what we've been doing in January is Pastor Dave and I have really just been kind of going kind of one-off messages, really feeling out what it is that we feel like God wants to depart into our community as we start the year off. Now, if you can believe it, this is the last Sunday of the year. As a matter of fact, we are one week away from the Super Bowl of all things. I mean, one week away from watching Tampa Bay destroy the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, I know I lost some friends there, but I got to put it out there. Go Bucks. Anyways, uh, that has nothing to do with what we're doing today, but what we are talking about um, is something that's near and dear to my heart. And I say that because today what I'm going to bring you is a message uh, or something that I've practiced just in following Jesus in the past 30 years that I found really, really beneficial. As a matter of fact, it's something that I try to do every single year. It's a question. Now, to be honest, truthful, in January, there's usually two things I try to do. One's a fun thing, and the other one is a purposeful thing. I just had to show you the fun thing. Uh, every year, it's the only time I do this, on December 31st, I try to shave all my facial hair off. It's the only time I do it, start the year with fresh, baby face and all that. However, on the journey to shaving all my facial hair off, I have to make one stop, and it's a stop that my wife cannot stand. As a matter of fact, it's only allowed in our house for one day. Here, I'll show you. Every year, I shave my facial hair into the dirtiest mustache that you've ever seen on my face. My wife can't stand it. She's like, you have one day to do this. So I do it really early December 31st, and then I have to shave it January 1st at the end of the day. But I mean, I've been doing this for years. This is 2019. This is 2016. Now, if you're out there and you have a mustache like this, I bet it looks good on you. But I think we all can agree that does not look good on me. I mean, this, just, this is my tradition, though. This was uh, in Colorado where my wife's from. We did a, a polar plunge. It was 20 below. Worst and best idea I ever had in that. But that's one of my traditions. But the other tradition is this, is there's one question that I'll ask myself every single year. And it's a question that I want to bring to us here as a community. Uh, and I think it'll be impactful and really helpful, even if you're watching this and you're not a Christian. Because the truth is, is that this question will really help you to kind of just take a step back and just evaluate kind of your whole life and the trajectory that you're heading towards. It's helpful if you're a student and you know, you're in this season where you're really just trying to like, discern and figure out what it is that you want to do with your future. Or maybe you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you're kind of in that stage where you don't have to work anymore and you're kind of like free and you've got all this time given to you. And you know, I believe that today God might give a little direction on maybe what are you doing with that time and how you can best use it for his kingdom and really what it is that he has for your life. And so I know for me as a, a parent with young kids, this is a question that's especially important. Okay, that's enough priming the pump. You ready to know what it is? Great, open your Bibles. That's where we're going to find it. Okay, so we're going to be in Matthew 25. You can open up your Bibles with me. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. We will bring it up here right on the screen. And we're going to be in the book of Matthew, specifically chapter 25. Now, for those of you guys that might be a little bit new to the scriptures, let me just kind of paint a little bit of background here. Uh, Matthew was a guy who was an eyewitness with Jesus. Uh, he went with Jesus every one of his disciples, and he wrote everything down. And there's 28 chapters in Matthew. So chapter 25, we're getting towards the end of Jesus' teachings. And at the end, Jesus really starts to emphasize, okay, here's the big picture, guys. Pay attention to some of these key things. And a lot of times he talks about it as the kingdom of heaven. We're going to pick it up. It's a longer passage today, so we're going to read a couple scriptures. I'll paraphrase pieces along the way, but it's really going to help frame the question that you and I are going to be applying to our lives today. So... Matthew 25, starting in verse 14, says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, 
who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. So there's a guy, he comes, he has a bunch of stuff that's of value. He gives it to his people, to his servants. I want you to do something with these things. Then he goes away, okay? So let's see what happens. Then he would receive the five talents. He went and he traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Now, one just little detail, you might be saying like talent, money, wait, how does this work? A talent back in uh, Jesus' time was a, a measurement of money, kind of like we say dollars today. So that's what it's referring to, not necessarily a skill set in this story, but a certain amount of money. And so you see two guys take it and do something with it, and one guy doesn't do anything, he just sits on it. Well, it says this, after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents, and look, I've gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now, the same thing happens with the guy with two talents, right? Because same reward, the, the master says, hey, that's exactly what I wanted you to do with it. But the guy with one talent, the one who sat on it, I want us to pay attention and see what happened to him. So then who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. So I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. So, okay, I was just scared. I didn't want to do anything. So I just, here, you can just have it back. But the Lord answered the master and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But for him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, that's our story. Like I told you, it's a little bit long. But as you kind of start to unpack this and frame this thing, let me tell you what's happening here. Listen, every time Jesus tells a story, it's for a reason. And typically that reason is he tells it through characters. And in the characters, usually one of those characters is you and me, and one of those characters is God. In this instance, obviously the Lord is God or Jesus. And the characters that are you and me happen to be the different people who receive the talents. And what he's really driving at in here is this, this big kingdom principle, and he's saying this, what God has chosen to do for you, what God has chosen to do for me, is not only to invite us into his family, but he's actually entrusted us with something. And what he's entrusted you with has a purpose. And when I think about this for myself, this is where it brings up the question for me. And the question is this. And I'm going to use an analogy of bricks here today. But my question is, is what are you doing with what God's given you? This is something I tend to ask myself every single year. Now, today I want to use bricks instead. As a matter of fact, uh, I tried to buy some bricks at Home Depot so I'd have a nice analogy to click them together and make this great sound. But it was $600 for a ton of bricks. And my wife would have killed me had I done that. So we will settle for this up here. But the idea here, I want to change out talents for bricks. You say, well, how come? Well, it's kind of simple to me because when you think of a brick, if I was holding a brick in my hand right here, bricks have a purpose, don't they? So usually when you have a brick, you're trying to build something. You're trying to do something with it. It has a, a usefulness to it. And in the same way, when we're talking about bricks today or the things that God's given us, it's kind of got the same expectation that goes with it. Listen, what he's entrusted you with, it has value. And it has a purpose. The question is, is have you figured out what that purpose is? Or how to use the things that he's given to you for the, the purpose that he's given them?
You say, well, what do you mean? I, I don't have a lot. Like, I'm not loaded. I'm just trying to survive in this pandemic reality. Or, you know, well, what are you talking about? I'm not talented. Like, I look at all these other people around the world. They have so much more talents. I just don't feel like I have anything to offer. Listen, here's the thing. Although it's true, different people have different amounts of things. Can I tell you, in all my years of following Jesus, all my years of being a pastor, I've never seen a single person who didn't have something special that God had entrusted them with. We all have something. So what do you mean? Can you define that a little more? Yeah, let me show it to you. So rephrasing my question, what are you going to do with your bricks? Here are some things that might be considered bricks today. Your time, your treasure, the opportunities that God's presented to you, the talent that you have, and maybe even the words that you say. And the thing about it is, is what I want to ask is, I mean, take the words, right? We all have the power to speak life and to speak death into people. So we all have a tongue. That's just the nature of the beast, right? For better or for worse, we all got it. Some of us, we use our tongues quite a bit and talk, 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 talk. And others of us, we just say a few words and try to really mean what we say. But we all have it. But the question that I want to ask is, even if your words, what are you using them for? Are you using them to bring life or bring death? See, I'm not just pulling this out of my own head. This is actually straight from Scripture. I'll show you in James. James says it like this. Take ships as an example. Although they're so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boats. It makes great boasts. Excuse me. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. See, the thing about it is, guys, is the different things that God's given us, we have a choice of what we can do with it. Matter of fact, when I look at it, there's three things that you can do. And this is kind of the, the big way to answer this question. There's three things people do with their bricks. They either go and they build your own kingdom, or they go and they build his kingdom. And this last one, not a lot of people realize, but it's actually very, very true. And we can even just use it with the words thing we just saw. Sometimes we'll just use them against others or to tear down other people's kingdoms. So what do you mean? Listen, I don't know if you've noticed what's gone on in the world today, even just nationwide. If you've heard of like cancel culture and all this kind of stuff that's begun to happen. But it just seems like there's an appetite in the world today to just be hypercritical of everything and just tear things apart. I mean, if you go online, you'll watch on Twitter or these other places. They just, people just love to find faults with others. And they just go after people and their words are just like cutting. I mean, I really think like some of the stuff you read, you just, I can't imagine people even saying this in person or out loud, you know, but it's just kind of everywhere. And it's interesting because as soon as they finish with one person, it's like they just move on to the next one. Like, okay, guys, who are we mad at today? Are we mad at this person? Are we mad at this person? In other words, this power, their words, their power of observation and critique, what's beginning to happen is, is they're actually being used to take down and destroy whoever they want to destroy. It's just a nature of bees. It makes me think actually some things from Scripture. Check this out. Proverbs 20, 10, 23 says, Doing wickedness is like a sport to a fool. And listen, we're living in a, a day and age and a time where if you come back and if you actually look um, and you see these different kind of areas on it, a lot of times what people are doing with what God's giving them is actually attacking one another. They use their careers to build themselves up at work and just really, I want to just do my own thing. And oftentimes what that means is in order for me to get ahead, I have to crush somebody else. Or you can see it in a family sometimes. Or sometimes what you'll have is, is different people that, you know, they really want things to go their way. And so what they'll do is they'll use their, their brain or their way that they think or if they control the money and they'll kind of leverage this and they just try to force their way and their kingdom to be the reality for the whole house. And it's not necessarily how God designed everything. It's not necessarily how God designed a family to flourish. But the nature is, is listen, in the world that we live in, there is a natural tendency for all of us, myself included, 
to lose sight of God and his kingdom and the big picture of bringing life to everybody around us and actually just getting very, very hyper-focused in our own kingdom. It's just the nature of the beast. It's, it's kind of just hardwired in all of us. And sometimes, you know what I think we need to do is sometimes what we need to do is we actually need to stop and we just need to take a step back and we need to just survey our life and just be able to say like, what am I doing with my time? Where am I investing all my treasure? What am I doing with the gifts and the talents that God's given me? The opportunities that I have. Am I using these things to build my kingdom? Am I using these things to build his kingdom? Or am I using these things actually against somebody else in order to get whatever it is that I want? Or because it just upset at that. You know, there's just different things that can go on in there. And, you know, the truth is, is the reason why this is good to pause and ask ourselves is because sometimes in life, and this is true the season of life that me and my wife are in, it's not that I have like a bad heart and I just want to go back and just build my own kingdom. But the reality is, is like, I'm just overwhelmed with busyness. Anybody else feel like that? It's like, Get the kids stuff ready. Work one and a half jobs. You know, make sure that we touch base at some time. How do you do this? Uh, stuff is breaking. The car broke. We got to move. We got, and just like the details and things just swirl in. And here's what can happen if you don't ask this question. You just get consumed by the, the tyranny of the urgent. And without realizing it, you just put your head down and you just start building whatever it is that's right in front of you. And without even realizing it, maybe you were on a track where it's like, I'm doing exactly what it is that God wants me to do. You know, I'm living in a way that's not just about me. I'm looking out for my coworkers. I live in a way that's not just about me, but I'm actually making ways to like reach out to my family members. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm doing it. But over time, the busyness comes and used to go from a kingdom perspective so now it's just, I'm just trying to keep everything afloat. And sometimes in January, most times, I'll just sit back and I'll just ask myself the very same thing that I'm asking you today. Is, what is it that you are doing with the things that God's given you? And you know why this really matters the most to me? Listen, this question is good. It's, it really is important to ask this, you know, to really look and to say, you know, what are you doing with the things that God's given you? And to, to make sure you're doing it. But the biggest reason and the big teaching in this is what Jesus is talking about is he's basically letting you and I know, hey, listen, there's going to be a day where you and I stand before him. This isn't a hypothetical story. At the end of our life, we get to stand before God and God's going to look at you and he's going to look at me and he's going to say, TJ, what did you do with what I gave you? Because I gave you a lot. And what did you do with it? Did you just sit on it? Did you do nothing with it? Did you build your own kingdom? Or did you really start to figure out, okay, God, here's what you've given me and how can I use this for something that's bigger than just me? It's a real day that's coming and it's going to happen for each and every one of us. And, you know, as part of the teaching team here today, I just it's really important that people realize that. This is why I ask myself this every single year, because it helps me to not live for just today. It actually helps me to look as what's going to matter over the course of eternity. What's going to matter in the big picture of it all? Because I want to be busy, if you will, with the right things rather than overrun with busyness. I want to focus on the things that are really, really going to last. And the truth is, is if you say, well, can you tell me exactly what it is? That's something that each one of us, as we search through the scriptures, we're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us to figure this out on our own. But it is a day that's going to happen to us. It's a day where we stand and we give an account to God with what we did with what he gave to us. Now, I do want to say this because that sounds scary. And to be honest with it, it is a little bit scary. It's going to happen on that. But when you're before God, your good works aren't the thing that earn you your salvation. I just want to make sure that's really, really crystal, crystal clear. It's not like, okay, if I didn't do enough, then I'm out with God. That's not how this works. The only thing that makes you and I right with God is not if we lived a perfect life, not if we did, if we're good enough or we measure up. It's if we've put our faith in Jesus. Salvation is based on our faith with Jesus because he paid the price and made it possible. But with that being said, the life that we live should be a reflection of what Jesus did for us. 
So what do you mean? Well, if he gave everything for me, laid down his life for me, took me into his family, and then entrusted me with things, it only makes sense that I would then go in an attitude of almost gratitude. And we say, you know what, God, out of everything that you've done for me, I just want to be about what it is that you want to do in the world around me. And you know who picked up on this? All of Jesus' disciples. It was a big theme. As a matter of fact, Peter, he's going to mention uh, one of the other disciples besides Matthew. He paints this picture of what God's doing, not just through you as an individual, but really through all of us as the body of Christ, as Christians. He says it in 1 Peter 2. He says, like living stones... You're being built up into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, I realize for some of us when we read this, we're like, man, that is a lot of church words. What does this even mean? What he's basically saying is, listen, you and I, we are now like a living stone. A living brick, if you will. And what God's going to do is he's going to use us to come together and he's building a church, if you will. He's building his people. And what's going to happen is as we're like holy priests, we're going to basically go and we're going to set things right. And when we do this, God loves it. Like when we worship him with a pure heart or when we start to advance his kingdom, take care of others around us, and we start to just live in this reality, it's something that's pleasing to him. And it's something that we get to do through Jesus Christ. Now, we do this as an individual, but we also do this as a collective community. Matter of fact, if I can, I just want to take a, a couple seconds just to speak to those of us um, that are here at New Hope Windward. That, you know, this is, this is the, the church that God's called us to be a part of. And if that's you, uh, you know, what God's doing is individually He's working in our lives, but also collectively, uh, here on the Windward side, God's doing something very, very powerful. Now, we talked about this for the last couple weeks. Uh, as you know, three weeks from today, one of the things that we're going to get to do is we're going to actually get to go back and have uh, some weekly in-person services. So we're going to be going back to Regal Cinemas at Windward Mall. And what we're doing in here is what we're trying to build. It's not a show. It's not this big production and anything else. You know what we're trying to build? We're trying to build a place where, man, God's spirit is. And when his people come together, that people can experience him in like a powerful, powerful way. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, it's, it's been kind of neat. I told you guys a couple weeks ago, I live in Kaneohe now. And it's been neat running into people from the church. And one of the coolest things is just to see like just different people's stories. And you know what's incredible is it's like over the years, I mean, we're coming up on 20 years here at New Hope Windward. In 20 years of this church existence, God has done so many incredible things in our midst in people's lives. I mean, He's used it to advance His kingdom. And many of you have been part of that journey. You've helped to contribute into that. And I just really feel like what God's saying is like, it's, it's, He's pleased with what it is that we're building. He's pleased with how it is that we're going about everything. Well, as Pastor Davis shared, part of what he feels as the leader of this church is that it's time for us to now come back together. Uh, for some of us, it's time for us to come out of the space we're watching at home back into an in-person reality because we all know it's, it's a little different from just watching online, which is great. God moves. But when we're in the room sometimes and we're worshiping together or we encounter each other and just kind of like have a little bit of relationship, a lot of times there's just different dynamics and there's a different, different aspect that happens. Um, it's almost like one of those, like you have to be there to know. You, like you ever have stories where like, oh, you had to be there to kind of get the fullness of it? And in some ways that can be what happens. Now, I know for some of us that, you know, we're not able to gather. Maybe it's just high risk in this season and we need to just stay in that spot. And that's totally fine. We're going to continue to have an online service reality. But we talked about, it's like, hey, listen, in order to make this happen, uh, it's going to take a whole community of people to do this. So we put this thing up a couple weeks ago. Uh, Pastor Dave did as well talking through. But, you know, every week we do church as family. And it's, you know, real local style. Everybody contributes. Everybody helps. And typically what it takes is it takes about, right, about 357 people to make church happen in person. Well, Last time when I spoke to you guys, we were in the hundreds for where we actually were. We had, you know, quite a bit to go to. The good news is that we've crossed this 200 threshold. So there's over 200 people that are saying, you know what? 
I'm willing to chip in, I'm willing to volunteer, not necessarily maybe every week, but at least contribute sometimes, because you know what? We're gonna do this all together. We're gonna build this place that really God's spirit and people can come in and encounter him in a very, very real way. Now, today's kind of the last big push in that. And so, as you can see, we're at a little bit of a deficit here. So, we need, you know, about 150 more people that would be willing just to jump in and help. And you say, oh, that sounds like so many, but can I tell you, like, we've got a lot of people that call New Hope Windward home. And the idea that we're looking for is not that a few people would serve the many, because we all know this. In Hawaii, that just doesn't sit right with any of us, does it? When it's just a few serving the many, it's like, ah, oh, it's kind of hard. And so our heart is that we would have an abundance of people. So that it would be like the whole many hands makes light work. Because what we're doing is on a mission, we really feel God's asking us to do this. And so I believe that even for some of you here watching today, that God's prompting your person. And he's saying, you know what? I want you just to be able to help. I want you just to chip in. And maybe you're like, oh, I just, I don't know. It's like, hey, I totally get it. But if you do want to chip in, Here's the real easy steps for this to happen. This is it. You can just take out your phone. Uh, there's two ways. You can text helper, which I'll show you that in a second. Or if it's like, eh, I don't know about text, I just like talk to somebody. Hey, no problem. You can call the church office. As a matter of fact, if you're watching this right now, try pull up your phone. Uh, you can just take a picture of the screen so you have this information. Uh, or if you're on a computer, you can screenshot it or you know you can always go on our website and go back to this part of the message with the instructions. But if you wanna know how this one works is if you're willing uh, to chip in with us as family, then all we gotta do is just type 484848 in the, the two spot. And this is straight from my phone. You click helper, just like it says, even though it sounds a little different. And then what'll happen is it'll give you this little blurb and there's a link. And this link will give you very, very easy steps on how you can go about it. And you say, well, like, what will I be doing? A, you can choose what you do. Like, hey, well, I'm not really trained. Hey, don't worry. These guys are excellent at training on that. And our heart isn't to overburden anybody. Our heart is that we would actually be able to accomplish the thing that God's given this church to do. And like I said, we really feel like this is a massive space. Now, I recognize that many of you may be here and you might be on the fence about this. Like, ah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, if you're not sure, here's what I want you to do. What we're going to do is, you know, on uh, February 10th, we set up this special time with Pastor Dave. And so what this time is going to be is Pastor Dave's going to come and he's really going to explain the big picture of why we do what we do. Listen, for me, one of the things that's built my faith the most isn't just remembering what God's done in my own life but actually when I see God working in other people's lives. And listen, when you're involved in church, not just um, part, like sitting back, but actually a participant and being able to help make it happen on that, you hear some incredible stories about what God's doing. And you know what? It builds your faith. It transforms you. It's like, man, I can't believe it. I'll give you one example. Uh, I had a friend. He, uh, he vowed he'd never go to church. This guy was brilliant. He uh, was one of the youngest traders to ever trade in Morgan Stanley's desk. He's an atheist that knew exactly why he was an atheist. Except his wife invited him to church, and she was going to share that day. So he just came out of like just being a polite husband. And he showed up in the room. And on that very day, in the church service, man, God met him in such a powerful way that at that very moment, he gave his life to Jesus. To this day, this is one of the, the most life-giving, encouraging guys I know. Matter of fact, he texts me a couple times a week. And every time he texts me, I just am always blown away. Because here's a guy who was so against God. But after encountering his power and just who he is, his life is like never be the same. And there's so many stories, I know for many of you that are watching, that you've experienced that exact same thing. And it happened through New Hope One Word. That's what we're praying God continues to do as he transforms our island. Listen, it's been a hard year for us in 2020, right? As an island, as a state, as a nation, even around the whole world. But we're believing even though things are hard, that God is going to do something incredible in our midst. And part of us being able to do that is by taking this step into creating the space that allows for us. So if you want to text helper to 4848, and if you go to this volunteer thing, here's the thing. If you're on the fence, just sign up to go to this by texting that. 
And it doesn't mean that you have to do anything. It just means that you're going to hear Pastor Dave on a Zoom call and you'll get a little bit of a clearer picture of what it is and where we're going as a church. And then it'll give you some of the options. And then you know what? If you opt out at that point, no problem. Say, hey, Pastor TJ said I could opt out. And cool, we'll just do that in there. But I just, I just want you to have enough information and really get the heart and the picture of this. Because I feel like some of you guys, I just, I don't want you to miss out on seeing what it is that God's doing on our island. And really, you know, seeing God transform not only people's lives around you, but even your own. Uh, I want to close just with this today. You know, as we, we talk about this, um, you know, as we just ask this question and look like, okay, God, what are you doing? What are we doing with what you've given us? Where are you up to? How do I become part of this? You know, uh, last week, Pastor Dave shared about um, one of our, our Windward staff members uh, named Galen and, you know, how he passed away. And, you know, that really hit me as I was sitting there and I was thinking about it. Um, I thought about this for the last couple of weeks and uh, Galen would actually help film. And so I get to see him all the time. And, you know, as I was talking to Pastor Dave, uh, after the sadness of it, I just thought to myself, man, that guy was just, that guy was the real deal. You know, whenever I encountered Galen, he was just always so full of joy. And if I had to answer that question, what is God doing with what he's given Galen? Galen was doing it. Not because he was serving at New Hope Windward. If that's what you think I'm talking about, that's, that's, that's not the point what I'm trying to make here. I'll give you an example. One time I needed some help in my personal life with something. Gayla lived on the Windward side. I was over at Kahala Mall, way, if you're not from Hawaii, way across the other side of the island. Um, you know, for those of you guys who have visited Hawaii, you might be like, that's only like a 30, 40 minute drive. But for all of us that are local, we know that's an eternity, right? So far. But I remember it was like really busy day and I, I needed help. And Galen decided that he was going to jump in his, his van and he drove all the way across. I can't remember if he drove a van, but whatever his vehicle was, he drove all the way across and he met me. And I'm like, bro, like, you're so busy in that. And it was just like, no, like, it's my joy to be able to serve and to help you with whatever you can. And it's just, that's how he carried himself everywhere he was. When people talk to him, it's just, that's the nature of who he was. Galen wasn't about just building his own kingdom or tearing anybody else's down, but he really just wanted to be God's hands and feet everywhere he was. You know, I was talking to Dave, I thought about it, I said, you know what, it's so sad that Galen passed, but I really believe what Galen, after he passed, the very next thing that he walked into was the master saying, you know what, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And you know what, for my life, that's what I want to hear. At the end of my time, no matter how long it is, I don't want to be somebody who just got caught up in the busyness of life, but who lived intentionally so that when I stand before Jesus one day, I don't get to say, hey, Jesus, I was perfect. I did everything right. It's like, no, I made a bunch of mistakes, but God, I really tried to make sure that I lived for your kingdom and not just building my own. And I know for many of us today, that's something that we want to start to put into practice. So what I want to do as we close is just to pray for you. And to pray for me, because the thing is, is I really believe that the Holy Spirit, if you'll just give Him just five or ten minutes this week. Matter of fact, here's your practical. I just want you to give five or ten minutes, either today or this week. Just take time by yourself. Just take a piece of paper and maybe spend five minutes writing down the things that you feel like God's given you. Oh man, you know, He's, he's given me this job. Here's some of my skills. Even if you can only write down one or two things. And then I just want you to pause and just pray and say, God, is there anything that you want me to do with any of these? And then just wait. And whatever comes to your mind, even if you're not sure if it's, it's God or you, I just want you to write it down. And let's just see what God will do as we just make some time and just take some space in there. Because I really believe that when we get into this alignment, it will change your life from the inside out in 2021 will be one of those years that you saw great things, not only for your own life, but in the people all around you. So if you can, would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? Let's pray. You know, God, today, uh, we just pause. I just pause and I just take a step back and Lord, I try to do my best to just present it as clear as day what your teaching was, but Jesus, I know that you really want to prepare us for the days that are coming. 
And what you've done is you've given us different gifts or abilities or skills or time or all these different things and you've done it for a reason. But Lord, I'll be the first to confess that sometimes I take those things and I just use them to build my own kingdom. Not always from a bad heart, sometimes I just get busy. Sometimes I forget about being your hands and feet, uh, you know, wherever I am with, with family or friends or the people I run into. And today, God, what we want to do is pause and we want to center ourselves back on the big picture here. When you died on the cross, you put us in relationship with you. And then you empowered us to go and be your hands and feet to change the world around us. And God, we want to be people who do that, who use what you've given us for the reasons that you want us to and the way that you want it. But only you can direct us. The Holy Spirit, as many of us will take five to 10 minutes this week, just to take a evaluation of the things we have and what it is that we're focusing on doing with them. And if we're just using them for ourselves or if we're really using them for your kingdom. And then, God, would you speak to our hearts and whatever you tell us, Holy Spirit, would you empower us to be able to live that out? Because our aim, God, is one day when we stand before you, we would hear you say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, while those of you guys are here praying and your heads down, eyes closed, it's our habit here at New Hope when we're to just give an opportunity for those of us that might be checking church out or haven't made a decision to follow Jesus, an opportunity to do so. And what the scriptures say is, listen, you don't have to get your life all together or be perfect. Matter of fact, none of us can do that. But all it is, is when we come to Jesus, we just recognize that, you know what? I've been Lord of my own life for a long time. I've just done my own thing and just, I'm kind of king of everything. And if you want to start a relationship with Jesus, it just means that you just start to just change. Say, you know what, I'm done doing my own thing and now I want to follow after you. I've heard about how you have a plan for me, how you care for me, how you died on the cross to make me right with God. And I want to put my faith in you and start a relationship. And if that's you, here's what I want you to do. I just want you right now, you're just, we're going to pray a prayer together. And it's not magic words because the real thing that really matters is what's happening in here. But I'm going to give you my words and you put the heart in that space. And we're going to start this journey here today. So uh, if you can, would you just repeat after me if that's what you want to do here today. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I know that I've made mistakes and I've messed up and I'm sorry. Today, I want to make a decision to follow after you. I want you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and to be my leader. And help me to follow after you all the days of my life. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Yeah, God, and that's what we all want to do every day. When we come together, Lord, we want our lives to be something that's pleasing to you. We want what we build together to be pleasing to you. And so, God, we just pray that you would have your way in us. We give you full permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. We love you. We praise you. And all God's people said, amen, amen. All right, well, hey, thanks for joining us today here at New Hope Windward. Hey, I do want to give you a little bit of a heads up. Next week is Super Bowl Sunday, which we call Football Sunday. And what we do on that day is we actually have something really special planned. And there's different uh, professional athletes in the NFL that will share a lot of their testimony and their story. And so we actually broadcast that on um, all of our services. And so if you have a friend that loves football, it's a great day to invite them into church or to just share a link with them or just shoot a text over to them and we all watch that before we watch the Super Bowl and we just dive in in that way so uh, feel free to do that look forward to that as well and then we'll start a brand new series the following week but other than that the worship team's going to come and close us out and we will see you next week
Can we say amen? The Lord is our victory and he has the victory. Can we say amen to that? Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We hope that you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. God bless.